Welcome back. So let's start um, abstraction, the first topic which I have listed for design principle. So today I will try to cover abstraction. Okay. So if I go to here uh, in my whiteboard, so abstraction. Okay. So in my perspective, when I am trying to explain abstraction, I think uh, it is always beneficial if I see it from two different angles. And the one angle is uh, which is primarily derived from architecture view. So software architecture, software architecture, architect view. And the second one is uh, software developer view. So because uh, these are the two person, these are two main person who are in software development process who are primarily using abstraction too heavily in their day to day task. Okay. So so these two are the fun fundamental actors who are primarily using or acting on abstraction. Now let's try to understand the first the architecture view. So if I have as an architect want to understand abstraction or want to explain someone abstraction, I will primarily fall upon four questions. The first question is what is abstraction? Okay. So to understand what abstraction. So I will ask myself, right? What abstraction? What is abstraction? Okay. Then the se second question. So usually in what question, the answer would be like, I should have to define the abstraction normally, right? But then is it understandable? No. So how you will understand when you get some real, real world example, right? When you get some real world example, then you will understand. So let me put you one real world example. So explain with the second point the second point is explain with real world example okay so okay so this, this is the second thing you should know and the third thing once i know what is abstraction and how you can identify for that you have to map your concept with real world okay and the third thing is the third point we should always understand as an architect, why abstraction is important in software design. So that's why. Why abstraction is important in software design, right? That's the third question. And then these three questions, if you ask yourself, what, how, and why, it will answer your all understanding. Right, the understanding requirement. Mostly these three questions fundamentally will explain you whatever the topic you will read in future. So always ask these three questions. Either you are a developer or an architect, doesn't matter. But if you answer these three questions in the way you are understanding the topic, you will definitely, definitely get the long run, I mean understanding for longer time. Okay, so this is the fundamental thing from my side. Then I will go to explain. So in one term, if I, in one more sentence, if I would like to define abstraction, abstraction is one of the fundamental concept of software engineering and when i give you the real real time real world example you will quickly understand what exactly i'm talking so the let's like let's uh, let's uh, take one example from real world and that example is suppose you are a bike lover and you want to ride a bike so for riding a bike you only need to understand that how to apply the accelerator how to apply the brake and how to start the bike okay these are the minimum things, how to start the bike, how to accelerate your bike and how to stop, like break the bike. But my question to my, I mean myself only that, do I need to ride a bike to understand how internally these starting, accelerating or braking, how it is working, do I need to know to ride a bike? Ask this question to yourself. And I'm pretty sure that you will, if you have any experience in any kind of riding or any kind of work, uh, either bike riding, car riding, anything like that, you will quickly answer us, answer me that no, no, we don't need to understand internal mechanism. We only have to understand what we mean by accelerating and how it is doing. Like if you press the accelerator, it will excel. If you release the pressure, I mean accelerator, it will slow down, right? So this much feature only you need. You don't need how acceleration is internally going on. So similar way for similar things, similar way you can understand the other also like braking and starting all these things. So in a nutshell, if I would like to say one thing, then most of the time, knowing the feature and that feature, how internally working, both two are different things. So when you will abstract 
actual implementation from the interface, you will say that abstraction. So architect point of view, it is a kind of thing which you decoupling from the system, from uh, interface to implementation, right? And that will be an architecture perspective that would be abstraction. And uh, in, in most of the like old object oriented programming languages, these are heavily used in day-to-day -day programming, day-to-day -day architecting, day-to-day -day designing. That's why this is a very, very fundamental. And from my side, this is the first topic when you want to understand design principle. I hope this will be, this will give you clarity on abstraction. This is the first point. You should always think about abstraction. And this is the architect view, like how architect is seeing. And okay, so why important because the developer view, let me give you some structurally, I mean, some design for understanding abstraction. Okay. So I hope that many of you are web app, app I mean, web developer, and if not, that is also not an issue. Uh, you can try to understand it. Okay. So let me give you some uh, analogy on. Okay. So let me select first the pen. Okay. So let me select the pen. Okay. Select some color. I have selected. Okay. So now, okay. Perfect. So let's take one example, which is just, I mean, by showing the diagram. So suppose you are building. Uh, okay. This one. Hmm. So Suppose uh, you have a, and you want to build a web application, okay? Suppose you have a requirement where you are building web application. So web application is primarily designed as a multi-layer architecture. That was also old time concept, new concept, it's microservice based concept, but that will, I will come again. I mean, in this session only, but, but the next, I mean, later. First, you have to understand how the multi-layer architecture is primarily based on these um, abstraction concept only. So web, business and data, these are the three layer primarily, which is the minimum requirement of any web application, right? And here are the user, web user, or you would say that users, either they are web users or by any client application. Anyway, they are using it. This is the web portal for or front end, you would say front end of your, of your web application. Okay. Now, just imagine, just imagine, do you need any kind of understand? I mean, do your user need any kind of understanding here regarding business logic and data? I bet you can easily say no, it is not because user are only need to understand the exposed UI, either in form of your web portal or if web services are you have, ex you are exposing then web services interface of web services, or maybe if particularly, if you are talking then like restful APIs. A web API is exposed to the user, user client, right? So these are the fundamental understanding that when you don't need to expose the internal mechanism to, to use or consume your features by user, that is the fundamentally explained as an abstraction. Okay. Now, what is the advantage you are getting here? Most, I mean, beautiful advantage you are getting that even though, even though you can modify, you can change underlying logic underlying logic if it if your user is not directly dependent on this layer if your user is not directly dependent on this layer exactly your user do not bother at all about what you are doing the change until unless you are not breaking the features so if you are not the breaking the feature everything is working fine and you are independent to change your business logic business layer or data business logic layer and data layer independent of your the exposed interface and this is the beauty of this abstraction okay so let me go again with some other concept now. Okay. So let me see the things in different way. Another example, maybe another example, maybe is something like, yeah. So another example, maybe I would say, hmm. so let's, let me select pen. Okay. So let me take now another example, which is microservice based example. Pen, where is the pen? Okay. So let me take the another example. Say, for example, we have set of microservices. Okay. So microservices one, microservices two, and microservices three. Okay. So this is the latest trend where everything, every services is designed as in microservices. Now imagine you have a microservices, and in microservices, usually the microservice, all n number of microservices are internally depend on two. I mean, there are lots of features which is commonly used by these microservices, right? Those are called common interface, common component. Okay. Common components. And these common components may be one, 
underlying common component are independent to each other, right? Like one is security, another is uh, logging, maybe another thing, etc. I mean, anything like you think on it and you can add here. Then there is a common interface, common interface based on your some logic, maybe naming server, maybe API gateway, right? These are the internal mechanisms across the connectivity and communication between microservices. They are just trying to, uh, I mean, create the internal communication. Now, when you talk about these microservices, they have to always deal with certain interface, right? Uh, they are always deal with these kind of certain interface. They should not bother much about the internal component, right? These are only bother about these exposed interface to them and these all microservice whenever want to interact to each other if M ms1 wants to talk to ms1 or share something to ms1 they only have to go through these common components and common interfaces right so they always go to the common interfaces and think about using all these things right so what i'm trying to share you that if you can create these kind of abstraction right what you did here if you try to understand it this is very fundamental only you have done that you have not directly coupled your common component with these microservices because otherwise every microservices has to do something to consume these common component. Instead of this, you have just abstracted so that whatever insight you want to do, you can do independently. You don't bother about any uh, dependency or any direct coupling on MS1, MS2, MS3, how they are going to consume it. They are only supposed to consume as per the common interface exposed to them. That's it. So this is another example of um, abstraction, which is which is primarily, uh, I mean, how architect is seeing these uh, abstraction. Okay, so I think this is the this is this is a quite good analysis or quite good uh, explanation from software architect point of view. And let me carry through the now software development developer architect uh, so, software de developer view. I mean, how they are seeing the abstraction and how they are using it today. I mean, how they are using abstraction in day to day coding. So let's continue right, on so that part. Let's now. move on uh, for developer view now, especially uh, let me clear first the screen, right? And then select the pen. Okay. Okay. So let's discuss now the developer view. Come back. Okay. So, so developer view. Okay. Uh, whenever we are talking about the developer view, we are always talking about, or we are, we should understand two perspective here. Primarily, as per development perspective, there are two different kind of abstraction is possible in any object-oriented programming language. And the one is data abstraction. Another is functional abstraction. Functional abstraction. Okay. Somebody, it is somebody, functional abstraction also, I mean, somebody will call this functional as a process abstraction also process abstraction in more generic term word yeah so somewhere you can see that people are using this word and some somewhere you will see that people are using that word okay mm -hmm. so that is what uh, primarily uh, this so there are two fundamental way of understanding for a developer perspective data abstraction and functional abstraction now if i give you some example of data abstraction I, if i have to give you the primary example of data abstraction i would say this something like uh, okay so i don't know hmm. So let me take the example here. Um, so suppose you have this one, right? Yeah. So suppose your user program is here. This is your user program. And this user program want to use some object. Okay, so object. In this object, there are, you usually say that, you see that in, in standard like where you see that like the developer are following some some kind of standard best practices you will see that like that okay so there are two member variables name and id which are private to this class of this class okay so what does it mean it, it means that it is only visible inside this object if somebody who want to see this object from outside they cannot access directly name and id so for them if i want to expose it i mean if i want to if my intention is to expose it 
then I have to write some public method. Okay. So public like uh, getter and setter. So get name and uh, set name. Similarly, get ID and set ID. So, and these are, please try to understand that. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, these are primarily the interface and if I have to see, I mean, if my user account, uh, user program want to use it or interested in using this, they have to use these for public interface, right? They have to use this thing only. They don't ha have any accessibility directly to these member variables. This is an example of data abstraction. This is called data abstraction. I hope you will be clear now what is exact, what exactly is the data abstraction, okay? Now let's go to, let's make some room for uh, to understand another abstraction which is called process or uh, functional abstraction okay so let me again select the pen I think this is little anyway so I have to continue okay so let's try to understand the process or functional abstraction okay so here again like just earlier I explained you right you have a car driver or bike driver let's take it car driver and uh, you have a uh, again the same way right you have a car class and here you have um, some interface which is private that is uh, timely uh, in some language it is called internal methods right but uh, for I mean higher level higher level of understanding you would say that though interface or method which is private to some class they are only consumable inside that method, inside their public method. They cannot be used directly outside world. So that is what, so for example, um, I would consider a few interface like fill fuel, okay, maybe create for ignition, create a spark, move, move back, brake pads, okay, or something like for changing the speed, say for example, change, piston speed, okay. Now, the next thing is just go to public interface and here the public interface is turn on the ignition, okay, turn off the ignition, maybe accelerate, brake, okay, gear change if you are adopting that also then gear change. So these kind of few interface which is publicly exposed for the out outer world, right. So, and your car driver do not bother about how these internally working, they only know these things. If they have to apply anything, any features they have to use, they have to only know these things, right? This is only. So, these kind of like, this is one example of um, a functional yeah, process abstraction, okay? So, I hope that uh, this much information for developer also, okay, but if I have to show some example, uh, then I can... Can I write code here? Uh, it is better I will share the code in repository that would be better. For understanding point of view, abstraction is this much because if I will try to write the code probably that will not make months, more sense here also. Right? So what you see, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, I will try to share the code, um, maybe any one language, C++, Java or anything uh, in, in, in the uh, code through code repository. So for, for be better understanding of you, you, if you want to go through the, though it is not a complex code, so it is very simple code, but if you want to go through the code, you can go through the code. I will share the link in uh, video comment section, YouTube video comment section, and you just go through as per your requirement. If you need it, just go to that repository. If you don't need it, then it's okay. Okay. So I'm wrapping this video now for abstraction part. I hope uh, I'm able to clear your basic thought. It is very fundamental, but very useful, very handy. I mean, no code you have seen uh, in my understanding, no code is written without using these concept in any object oriented programming language. So, so these are the fundamentals, uh, even though you don't know earlier, still you have used it. So kind of things, right? So I hope this makes some clarity in your thought process. And if I am not able to answer or able to clear your thought, please, please ask in comment your direct question, indirect question, whatever you want, so that I will try to answer it. And that will help both of us you also and me also 
maybe I something missed it. So I will get the clarity. Okay, I have to add these discussion also so that people will get more benefit. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your presence. Keep learning. Keep moving. Thank you. Thanks a lot.